in this screencast video lecture we will try to understand about the hemolithotrophic organisms in a simpler sense it refers to a lifestyle of the organism dependent on inorganic chemicals as an energy source hemolithotrophy may be the first form of energy conservation to be evolved there in the earth system and it is widespread among the various lineages of the bacteria and archaea present in the earth from the time of formation the early ocean and all the earth was anoxic that is around 4.5 billion years ago the life has started originating only after 3.5 billion years after molecular oxygen did not appear in any significant quantities there on the earth's surface until the oxygenic photosynthesis that have been carried out by the cyanobacteria has become a major event there in the course of evolution thus the energy generating metabolism of the primitive cell would be exclusively of anaerobic and it would have operated under a heat stable condition only since the temperature was very high in their surface remember this hemolithotrophic organisms are need to use carbon dioxide as a sole source of carbon so automatically under that high temperature condition they should also have a physiological lifestyle to fix atmospheric carbon dioxide into cell carbon such kind of a hemolitho autotrophic mechanism have been reported there with the bacteria that have been evolutionary old there in the phylogenetic tree of life it includes bacteria like acufix archaea like pyrolobus that are basically autotrophic at the same time they are all hyperthermophilic in nature also it was widely thought that evolutionally this old group of organism that employs the hemolithotrophic lifestyle may be using hydrogen as a major fuel of energy for their metabolism virtually all the earliest evolved organisms under the category of bacteria and archaea were able to use hydrogen as an electron donor in their metabolism even the abiotic reaction between the iron sulfide minerals and hydrogen sulfide have been proposed as a mechanism by which hydrogen can be able to evolved there in the system apart from that ferrous ions that is fe2 can also able to reduce protons into hydrogen in the presence of ultraviolet radiation as an energy source so these processes can able to bring out a lot of hydrogen there on the earth system by which hydrogen may be serving as a electron donor as well as energy for the earlier known hemolithotrophic organism thus the earliest known hemolithotrophic process is an anaerobic hemolithotrophy that is a hemosynthesis process in which the elemental sulfur acts as an electron acceptor leading to formation of hydrogen sulfide simultaneously during this process carbon dioxide is getting reduced there into cell carbon by a kelvin cycle or by any other kind of carbon fixation cycle that may be operated there in the earlier environment thus the earliest hemolithotrophic organism that have been proliferated there in the earth surface includes mainly of methanogens which can able to reduce carbon dioxide with the help of hydrogen as an energy source the next important group is the sulfate reducing bacteria which again use hydrogen as a reductant for their growth process the process of hemolithotrophy was first described by vinogradsky he has referred that one as a anorgoxy denshan that is literally meaning inorganic oxidizers group of organisms so he refers hemolithotrophy as an energy metabolism of bacteria that uses the oxidation of inorganic substances in the absence of light as a source of energy for cell biosynthesis and maintenance another term that has been related that with the hemolithotrophy is hemosynthesis it was coined in 1897 by pfeffer it refers to metabolism of bacteria that uses inorganic compounds oxidation to support the autotrophic carbon dioxide fixation or carbon assimilation the important group of hemolithotrophic bacteria which we are going to study in this paper includes the nitrifers 
sulfur oxidizes, iron oxidizes, hydrogen bacteria, carboxylo bacteria as well as the methane oxidizer and producers. In the second column, you can able to see which molecule is serving as an energy and the third column shows the products that have been produced when that particular energy source have been used.